Hi everyone, I'm Ava and I'm an American living in the Netherlands. And recently I realized that my two year anniversary of having moved here is coming up. And to mark this occasion, I thought, why don't I share a very specific list with you? And that list is of Dutch stores that I cannot live without. I think the phrase Dutch stores that I can't live without may be a little bit of an exaggeration. So maybe more aptly it should be called Dutch stores that I really like and will be really disappointed if I didn't get to go to. But that's a less catchy title, so I'm going to stick with stores I can't live without. And as I was thinking about what I wanted to include and not include on this list, it did strike me how many things were similar and then also how many things were different. So I saw both aspects and I hope you will too. So without further ado, let's get into number one and that is Intertown. I feel like you won't just learn about Dutch culture and Dutch people in this video, but you're also really going to see what stores I specifically like. And um, I should have thought about this a bit more before deciding to share this with the internet. So Intertown, what is Intertown? So it is a department store that focuses on stuff for your garden. Now, do I have a garden? No, but does Intertown also cater to other needs? Absolutely, yes. Um, I never thought I would say something like, I can't live without a garden store because I always thought that that was something for people who owned like a big house in the suburb with a huge backyard and maybe a front yard too, because yeah, that's what many people like. And I live in cities. So in the US, I've never had the need to look for stuff to even go on my balcony because I've never really even had a proper balcony. I've had fire escapes, so I never really thought about getting stuff for the outdoor area when I lived in the US. But when I moved here, I started to have a bit more space. So I have a little roof terrace thing situation going on in my current apartment. And my girlfriend was like, okay, we need to go and make it nice. And that is how I was introduced to Intratown. Needless to say that once I got to the store, it be very quickly became about much more than plants. Also, you don't need to have a garden or to have plants, of course, but I was never very good at keeping plants alive. What am I saying? I'm still very much terrible at keeping plants alive, but <laughs> I go to Intertown and I just like transform into this person who wants to become a gardener. But okay, I feel like I need to really make it clear that this extends beyond plants and gardening because while Intertown is focused on these things, I've gotten stuff for my cat there. That's where I like to go to get stuff for my cat because it's just such a pleasant experience. Now I went there one time around Christmas and that was a mistake because that one time quickly became three. And to give you an idea of what Intertown can do to you, I walked through and around Christmas and of course they had a lot of Christmas decorations. So I was like putting things in my basket and it got to a point where I ended up with nine different types of Christmas tree ornaments. And folks, I don't own a Christmas tree. I've never owned a Christmas tree. At that point in time, I did not have a Christmas tree to put those Christmas ornaments on. And here I am thinking that I'm a rational person. Um, that said, going back to, to Intertown, in the US, there are probably places that are similar, but I kind of think of Walmart or maybe even the Home Depot. I, I don't, I've i never lived in the suburbs, so I don't really know what these big department stores offer in terms of gardening. But at least from my experience having lived in cities, I don't often come across places that cater to the garden, but then are also pleasant in other ways. This is such a weird list because the next item on this list is the Albert Heijn. Now, if you've seen my video on grocery shopping in the Netherlands, by the way, if you haven't, check it out. I mentioned Albert Heijn like every other sentence. I even had to say there, this video is not sponsored by Albert Heijn because I'm really talking about Albert Heijn the whole time. Um, are there other grocery stores in the Netherlands? Yes, they are. Are there great marts, outdoor markets that you can go to to buy your produce? Absolutely. Do I go to other supermarkets and outdoor marts? Yes, I do. I do. I go to all of these things and I like it, but something about the Albert Heijn. If I did not have the Albert Heijn, I think I would be a little upset. And I mentioned that there's a similar store called Heirloom Giant in the US, but it's still not the same. Um, it has to do with how things are organized and how they're really focused on you going in and coming out as quickly as possible. They have these nice uh, categories of items and everything is organized in a way that is 
meant for the consumer to go in quickly and come out quickly. I love that. I also love their stickers that say, this is a price favorite, or this is in the bonus. Just, I mean, it's such a nice experience. It's expensive compared to some of the other options available, but I like it so much, I can't help myself. Okay, watch out. This list only gets weirder because the next things I wanna talk about, and these are definitely stores, and I'm gonna lump two stores together, that I wouldn't, you know, die or be extremely disappointed if I didn't have them in my vicinity. But I do like them. So two stores that I like in terms of clothing are, and household accessories, should add that, are the Sissy Boy and uh, Scotch and Soda. So starting with Sissy Boy, I would compare Sissy Boy to Anthropology, which is an American store. I don't know the origins of Anthropology, but that is a store that is, Anthropology is really popular in America, so that is a store that is available in the US. There is a branch of Anthropology in Amsterdam, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't gone there. So the Sissy Boy is similar to the Anthropology. They have clothes, they're, honestly, if I'm being honest, expensive, unless you shop in the sales section. And Scotch and Soda is just a clothing brand that started in Amsterdam, and now some of their branches are also available in the US. But I got to know Scotch and Soda before they were in the US, and I really felt like I would like to be able to buy their clothes because they're slightly higher quality, they're a bit edgy and different, and I wanted to buy their clothes when I was in the US, but of course, that was not possible. Okay, so in terms of what I would miss, even though there is anthropology in the US, it's a little different, the styles of the stores, of course, but what I would miss about the Sissy Boy is that's where I buy presents for people. Like if I need to find a small present, I will go there and I know that I will see something because they have this eclectic collection of things for your house. So I just hop in there and grab a couple of cups or some notebooks or I don't know. They just, they have a wide assortment of things. So I would miss that about the Sissy Boy. Now moving on to Scotch and Soda, what I wanted to say about Scotch and Soda actually really applies to a lot of the clothing brands in Europe and in the Netherlands. And that is that it is way easier for me as someone who is five, seven and a half feet, that half is very important, which is about, I think 172 centimeters, 173, something like that. Um, it's hard for someone who's my height and not, and you know, like relatively skinny uh, to find clothing that fits them in the US. And it's not just that, it's that women also tend to be on the shorter side. So I am pretty above average in the US. In the Netherlands, I'm still relatively average. So it's easier for me to find clothing that is made for me and like jeans that don't stop at my ankles when they're not supposed to, for instance. To give you a concrete example, I recently visited my family two weeks ago in the US and we ended up going to Walmart because I don't know, they wanted to go to Walmart, okay? So we went and there was almost nothing in my size in the clothing section. I know this sounds like an exaggeration, but it isn't. There were very few pieces of clothing that they have and I'm, I don't shop at Walmart, but if I wanted to, I just wouldn't be able to because there were very few pieces of clothing that were smaller than an S and an S in Walmart is at least an, a medium, an M here in the Netherlands. So there just wasn't anything built for my size and I was really surprised. Number four, I feel like I am already anticipating the comments on this one. And number four, the fourth store, store is a generous description of the two places again that I'm gonna lump together. Um, and that is the Fabo and the Smullers. So basically places where you can get food from the wall. I, I think these I honestly cannot live without anymore. I know they're fast food places in the US, but it's not the same. Like I just, I don't like going into McDonald's or Burger King and it's just not my my speed. But so, something about getting these like nice fried snacks from the wall, yes, that is for me. And especially because Smullers and Fabo tend to be located perfectly. Like for instance, if I'm at a station, I grab a veggie burger from Smullers. I, I do that really often. And if you were to ask me before I moved here, whether I saw myself getting stuff from Smullers or Fabo, I would just say no, because you know, I'm not into fast food, even though I'm American. I mean, I like fast food, but I'm not into Burger King or McDonald's and places like that. Um, then I move here and the next thing you know, I'm all about that Vidalcha from the Fabo. Like I'm walking around, I'm like, oh my God, I'm hungry. 
Um, I just wish there was something, something small and something comforting and there it is. And I don't know what that difference is between why I don't like Burger King or McDonald's that much, but why I'm, I'm ready to just run to the Smellers or the Favo to grab myself something. No idea where that difference comes from, but I am admitting it to you. I would be very, very upset if I had to live without the Favo and Smellers. I guess you can just say that I have high-end culinary taste. You know what it is? I think it's quite funny that Dutch people make fun of Americans for liking fast food. Um, and it is a problem. Of course, obesity is a problem in the US, but at the same time, I would classify Favo Smellers very much in the same category as a Burger King, Wendy's, or McDonald's. And finally, number five, the last item on this list, probably, if you are Dutch, the reason you clicked on this video, and that is the Hema. Oh my God, how do I describe the Hema to people who are not Dutch? Maybe if you are French and you live in Paris, you've gone to the Hema. But listen, if you have not gone to a Hema in your life, you are missing out. The Hema is a place where you can just get everything you could possibly want. So the Hema is very similar to Target in the US that also has a large collection of items. They're very useful items. They're kind of cute, they're nice. Um, and it's a pleasant experience to go to Target in the US, but the Hema is at a different level. I can't explain it, but I think maybe it also has to do with the cultural significance of the Hema. And also the fact that the Hema really focuses on the gezellig experience. You go into the Hema and everything is very nice. It's comforting. Um, like I said, cute. I cannot say the word cute enough when I think of the Hema. When I initially moved to the Netherlands two years ago now, my girlfriend wasn't here with me. She was still in the US. So I kind of had to figure out where I would buy things on my own. And after some time, I caught on. I caught on to her just saying, why didn't you go to the Hema? You can find this at the Hema. And at some point I really realized that anything you could want, you could get at the Hema. What I like about the Hema is that they also have a lot of focus on Dutch culture. So for instance, they have a lot of Yip and Janneke things. Yip and Janneke are two characters out of a children's book series. There are lots of stories about Yip and Janneke and every Dutch person knows them. So they have all of these onesies and books with Yip and Janneke on them and it's, it's all very cute. The Hema is such a Dutch store that at some point the Hema was about to go bankrupt during COVID and there was an outrage amongst Dutch people. I think people were really willing to collectively buy out the Hema or I don't know, people, people were very upset. So those were five Dutch stores that I really like in the Netherlands. And if you have something to say about this video or anything about these stores, hey, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I've noticed that over 80% of you who watch my videos have not subscribed. Until next time, 